Any responses? Sorry, I was distracted for a minute. What was the response in? He said that uh, he doesn't know why the Lady of Pain rejected him, but he was hoping to uh, make Sigil his home as he hadn't been able to find a place to take up residence in the cosmos. Right. Uh, honestly, seems like to Flynn, he seems like a well enough guy. He just wants a place to live. He wants a place to call home. But, like, he, he, I don't think he gave me too trustworthy, but I don't think we should fire him entry. I mean, we could try to set sensible limits. Like, the, part of the fear that Akasha has is, like, let's think about the multiverse a bit more broadly, right? So, Sigil, the city of Zors, has historically not allowed deities or, like, very powerful creatures from entry. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that, like, this small city, with, which has, like, the greatest access to the multiverse, um, was denied, like, these gods were denied that access. So, for example, you know, the demons couldn't use it as, like, a launching point for their invasions, etc. So we should be trying to think about, like, how to keep Sigil as a relatively peaceful city, and that probably means we should pick and choose which divine entities are allowed inside, because we don't want to set a policy that, like, any divine entity can come in, or it'll just become a battleground of divine beings. That, that's fair. At the same time, though, it's, he... The I sympathize with him a little bit because he doesn't have a place to live. Like he's been denied everywhere else because he's not like he's not a true god, is he? Uh, John. How would you define a true god? Well, he does. He's just a deity. He doesn't really have. Uh, why was he denied? We know why he was. Uh, why he doesn't have a home elsewhere, right? He was created without a purpose and he refused to accept or create a purpose for himself which basically made him a loose cannon in um uh celestia and he was eventually banished from celestia because they knew if he didn't take up a cause or a a portfolio as a god and he became bound to the plane that they that they would be trapped with him forever okay and he was a troublemaker so they didn't want to have to deal with him forever it was mostly um set who uh spearheaded the campaign to get rid of him but by the end when they finally uh rejected him it was unanimous to remove him from celestia well uh flynn will take the stance that he has been rejected from his home plane and he just is looking for a place that he can be called his. but that's but that's flynn's opinion if anyone has any other opinions Well, Akash is not good like Flynn, so I think she would still advocate for the wisest course of action to ban him entry. But she can understand if Abigail may have a soft spot for him too, and if she does, then maybe just give him temporary residence and Sigil say, you know, provisionally you can stay and live here as long as you're on good behavior, and uh, we're not going to give carte blanche for other deities to make residence here. This is just, you know, case-by-case -case basis here. Anyone else have any input? So really, he's just trying to seek a s asylum status. Um, I don't know if you could in interpret that specifically. He uh, he said that he came to uh, Sigil as a place to call home, and he was rejected. But he hasn't really declared the same intention here all he said is that he came to serve the lady but 
Did I say put him on a probation status? Does Paul have any input? Yeah. Um, Paul would Paul would think that for now at least he would be a useful tool for taking control of the city. There are many people who may still be after Abigail and others that would be trying to use the uh, change in uh, leadership to fill the power vacuum and allowing that to happen unchecked would be a mistake. But having an enforcer with the capabilities of Abel would allow us to make sure that the city isn't taken over by the more nefarious elephant elephants elements. <laughs> the elephants in the room. Because I'm pretty sure there's a Church of Bane who tried to kill us all, and I'm pretty sure he could crush them. From a purely uh, martial point of view, um, there are very few beings in the multiverse that are more powerful um, physically than Abel. Obviously, uh, Chalva managed to find a way to defeat him. But she seemed like a smart-ish spellcaster. And he thought he had vanquished her. Like, he realized that he hadn't killed her, but he thought from his perspective, I defeated you, and you ran away, therefore I win. So he wasn't ready when she came back and attacked him in three days. Okay, so does anyone have any issue with putting uh, Abel on probation? No. No. Okay, do you have a task that you want him to perform immediately? I mean, to go along with Pa's idea, can we just have him promote, you know, stability within the city? Like, you know, enforce the law, try to bring all the chaotic elements back to order? Uh, he could definitely do that. What is the intention for the city? Well, we want to return it to its previous state and tell all those who left that the, this time of troubles is over, I presume, unless we want to just destroy it all and leave it a ruin. Or <laughs> I, think, I think we should sit, bring it back to what it was. back to its former glory. Okay. Um, he kind of scoffs at uh, returning the city to its previous state. But he will do whatever the lady wishes. Um, when he takes off, Flynn will also uh, ask if she go to the, go to the plans and let them know up. that the city's back, uh, or go to the outskirts so, of the yeah, Atlanta. Exactly. Let them know that the city is uh, safe. So, okay. Um, 
he uh, will uh, draw his uh, great sword and kneel in front of her and he uh, places it on the ground um, north to south in front of her and flies off. Is he leaving a sword? Yeah, he leaves a sword behind. I go take a look at it. Anything pop? <laughs> That's the time to do it. Uh, you can roll a knowledge religion check. Uh, <laughs> What's the net penalty when it's off skill? Well, if you don't have knowledge religion, you're not going to make the check, so it's not really relevant. I'm a planar ranger, not a... Not a... I didn't say that. All I said is you can roll a, uh, Fair. a religion check. It is not a planar item. It does not hold any significance in planar knowledge, so if you don't know it, you don't know it. Fair. Hmm, yes, big sword. Can I go have a look at it? Yeah, you can look at it. It is oh, a... Wait a second. You know what I can do? Where is it? I can identify a magic item with a spellcraft check DC plus the caster level of the item. I'll try that. I'll do a religion check and then I'll try that. What's the base DC for that? Base DC is 15, 15 plus the caster level of the item. Okay, so you can roll your religion check. From what well, you actually not that high. It's actually it's like three lower than that. Why is it three lower than that? Because I'm leveling right now, so I did my skills. So it's three less than that. Why did your religion check go up by three? Because I had it in other things up until that point and then I just maxed it. Well, I brought it to fifteen this time. Oh, okay. Okay, um, you know, according to um, the dogma of the Church of Septimus, the original um, uh, Khazar was uh, forged by Moradin and uh, enchanted by Mistra. It is supposed to be um, the most powerful weapon ever created. Um, but you also know that... Uh, Abel had this sword before Moradin was born. Oh. So this is an ancient, ancient relic. Yeah, there seems to be some holes in the history of um, the sword. And then you can roll your spellcraft check. Okay, then you can roll a will save. Cool.
Oh, wow, that's a nice save. It's almost enough. So uh, Pa goes up and examines the sword closely and then collapses to the ground. Excellent. After I rest, I level, right? Yes, after you rest, you level. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to go up to Pa and like, kind of step over his face and just kind of smack him across the face a couple times. Wake up, you lazy cat. Just gonna slap him across the face and not to wake him up. No, no. I, I, I... Everyone there? Anyone there? Yeah, I was just reading um, the history, so I knew where everything happened. Uh -huh. Am I able to slap Paul away? You are not. He seems to be uh, under some kind of stun effect. Uh, hey, hey, Miss Abigail, I suck. I can, suck. You, can you can you help Paul? He, I think he's taking a dirt nap. Yeah, most of the history that you were aware of begins about 15,000 years ago. Um, and at that point, um, the, uh, the council of, uh, Abel is well underway. The sword you're looking for, or that you are referencing, is the sword from the first God's War, and that was after Abel's um, exile. So about 14,000 years ago. Okay, anyone else have anything they want to do? Uh, if we're all wrapped up, I think I'll just go rally the uh, Outland cities now. All the good aligned ones. Let them know that the city's safe. I can get around fairly easily, easily with Dex, right? Um, I think Teleport and well, obviously Dimension Door have uh, limits. Around the Outlands, a lot of the uh, cities have uh, portals between each other, so if yeah, you know, I mean, just like to get to a portal to get to the uh, Outlands. That's what I'm saying is once you get to the Outlands, you can go between from portal city to portal city by finding the portals that go to the adjacent cities. Um, and being able to teleport and dimension door around would definitely help you with that. So you're just going to go around and tell all the good people to come back? I can come with them. Uh, I think I'll just get like murdered if I go to any of the like, uh, you know, evil places. That's fair. I'll send a, I'll send like a, uh, like a uh, messenger that to go tell the other cities to tell the more evil cities that are things are ready, or things are good in the city. Okay. English is hard. Holy. Sure. Akash is also going to be going around the city using the Rod of Order to try to restore as much as she can. Um, she'll try to stick relatively close to her allies so she's not like caught off guard by an ambush or something. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so as a group, you're going to go around the city restoring order? 
Ideally, yeah, if everybody else is up for that. Are you sticking around for that, Flynn, or are you going to take off? I'll stick around for that, because I know the Church of Bane is, uh, you know, on our... Holy shit, sorry. Uh, on our case. Sorry, I just got to please get drop. Really rare one. Okay. So you guys can spend a couple of days going around the city. Um, things are definitely not back to normal. There has been a tremendous amount of destruction in the wake of the faction war. Uh, but now that uh, the Lady of Passion has taken over, it has, at the very least, uh, stemmed the tide, and uh, people are at least uh, starting to relax a little. Uh, there are several factions who continue to fight on. Obviously, the demons, the devils, um, and the angels continue to battle on. They did not uh, leave the city because they weren't bothered by any of the issues. One of the things that uh, was going to happen was the Lady of Pain was going to close the portals to the elemental plane of air and uh, water so that there was no fresh air in the city or water, which would basically get rid of everyone who needed to breathe or eat. But uh, that did not happen. Um, other than that, it's just a matter of time for the people who, uh, who fled to return and start to rebuild. With Abel, uh, patrolling the city, uh, it is, uh, pretty easy to quell any resistance. He definitely has a bias against uh, demons and uh, is fairly uh, aggressive in dealing with them. But uh, for the most part, he basically appears, declares himself in the name of the Lady of Passion and uh, he's scary enough that people back down. He used to have friends in high places. Um, you guys can each roll a sense motive on uh, the Lady of Passion. Thirty-two. Flynn, you notice over the course of the next couple of days that she is becoming more withdrawn and less personable. Akasha, you interact with her a lot more, but you don't really uh, notice it to the degree that uh, Flynn does. She's obviously got a lot on her mind now, and that's going to change her personality versus just flying around and having fun. Um, I'll pull Akasha aside and uh, get, uh, let Akasha know that, uh, hey, you might want to talk to Abigail or like, get her a break or something. She doesn't seem like herself. Sure. Well, we don't want her to get too stressed out, I guess. So she'll talk to Abigail and maybe advise her to, you know, rest, relax when she can, and take a break. If uh, she wants to go fly around like she used to, she can certainly do so, or something else. We can probably handle things if she really wants to let things down. Although, of course, you know, if an emergency happens, we should be able to contact her and get her back or whatever. Okay. Uh, pa, you also noticed that uh, her, uh, her mood and her attitude is... Uh, shifting she's definitely becoming much more uh withdrawn and um i don't know kind of uh vacant and void like like the passion has come out of her existence uh, okay 
Oh, do you want to roll a will save for her? Abigail? Yep. Does she get the bonus or no? She just gets her normal will save. Lady of Pain, it's gone. Okay, um, so after you guys uh, spend about a week um, quelling the city, uh, things return to normal in that uh, the chaos, chaos has been reigned in and uh, the city is starting to return to normal. It's going to take years to uh, repair all the damage and... Um, calm the people in general but uh people are returning to their homes and their businesses so things are starting to bounce back what do you guys want to do from here um well once we take over during that week i will uh i'll make sure that we end the uh the um, the contract with the Church of Mistra to find us and whatever, find out what's going on and pay them out. And then I will go to the Church of Mistra and I will start researching on artifacts and ego, like ego, uh, egos of magic items. Okay. I want to make sure that the mask isn't slowly overcoming her okay you can roll your uh, check be a knowledge arcana knowledge arcana Okay, um, with a 29, um, you know that um, powerful artifacts can have a almost intelligence of their own. And depending upon the type of artifact, it can uh, hold a great deal of sway over the uh, wielder. What you know of the Mask of Sigil doesn't lead you to believe that um but you have witnessed a couple of uh situations where that has happened so none of your historical knowledge about the mask suggests that it has that power but everything that you know about it is from its creation forward and you don't know what was put into it before that or what it uh did to chalva over the course of the last like 15,000 years. Okay. So, sorry, did Abigail take the sword? Or what happened to the sword? We didn't really deal with what happened to the sword. Uh, we stopped with Pa getting stunned by it. Um, did anyone else want to deal with the sword? Well, Akasha would have advised Abigail not to take the sword herself, because I was afraid of this sort of thing. I was thinking, if the sword is intelligent, and if it, too, can influence the one that wields it, then that might explain why the Abel left it to Abigail. So, you know, as gracious as the gift was, maybe for now, just not deal with the sword until we properly understand what it does. Like, you know. What, what are you researching, Pa? Uh, I'm just researching 
the uh, le like lead um, artifact weapons or artifact items and uh, uh, their intelligence and whether or not they can overpower somebody. And if they can, how to stop it, you know, just all that stuff. Okay, uh, I misunderstood what you were trying to do. I was referring to the mask. I didn't even, uh, I glazed right over the, uh, the sword. To your knowledge, the, uh, uh, the sword does not possess um, a particularly powerful ego. It is an intelligent weapon, but it has like an animal level intelligence. So it's not likely to have any effect on, uh, on Abigail with her exceptional, uh, abilities. Um, it'd probably be a rather potent item against some of the other party members with lower ego scores, but, uh, when you're rolling a d20 and adding your ego can go any way you want. That would be an interesting concept. So from what you can determine, the, uh, the sword is not likely to have a negative effect on uh, Abigail. Um, assuming that this sword is uh, Septimus's sword, you would expect it to be very lawful, good aligned. So it's highly unlikely to have evil intent or malicious intent. Pa might not always agree with the things that it wants to do, but probably wouldn't be horribly offended by it either. So what is your plan for the uh, sword? I think she should take the sword. Okay. Anyone have an objection to Abigail taking the sword? Nope. If you really think it's safe, sure. Okay, Odo, you can roll another will save for. You're not doing well. I at least got double digits that time. True that. Okay. Um, after the first week passes, you can definitely tell that uh, Abigail seems to be slipping into kind of a melancholy uh, mood. Her... Uh, interest in doing basically anything is uh, dwindling away. Okay, I guess I'll spend some time with her and see what's going on, why she's feeling the way she is. Okay, you can roll a sense motive. You definitely get the impression that uh, she is withdrawing from you. Almost like you're a stranger. Oh, okay. You're not Papa Cat anymore.
Wow, this is going to be horrible for the people of Good Alignment. Why is that? Well, if the the mask is taking away her personality and slowly crushing her, she's uh, they're going to be real upset about that. I mean, I'm not going to be happy about it, but I don't have that moral problem of, oh my god, we caused this to happen. We helped her do this to herself. Okay, what do you guys want to do after that? Um, Abel has uh, effectively quelled all of the resistance in uh, the city. The Sentinels have taken up uh, their patrols again, and the Davis have resumed their duties. And Abel has returned to the palace to uh, be by the lady's side. I'm just, dude, with that planar check, did I fit know if she died or if she just went to like into her astral form? Because I'm concerned about her coming back. You did not know. I just know she went into an astral form. Uh, yes. Okay. Nobody made that check, so nobody knows what's going on with that regard. Yeah, there's really not much. Well, it, what, did, would she have any private records in the, her quarters in the castle that would like maybe give her us some idea of her power? What would happen if she died? Um, you can roll a perception check to see if you can find something. Use my half level. Uh, thirty-three. You do not find anything in the palace initially. Um, it is a rather immense place, and there are several libraries in it, but uh, you don't find anything that uh, pertains to Chalva personally. Okay. Um, but any of the, is there like a higher up Dabu that would, uh, that she trusted more than any with uh, knowledge? How would you determine that? I would just uh, go ask them. Uh, You're going to go around and ask all the Davis which one is the most important? Well, I'll just go around and ask if they like have a, have a leader or something. Okay, you can roll a gather information. Uh, what's that check again? It's just diplomacy, plus your local synergy. 19. I'll lock that up to a 22. Okay. Um, the Davis tell you that they are uh, ranked based on both their experience and age and their specific tasks. Um, most of your, your experience with the Davis have been with the uh, enforcers, but the Davis... Uh, were a race created by the Lady of Pain to serve in the city, and they hold positions ranging from sanitation workers right up to um, palace guards. So they definitely have a hierarchy, and uh, the uh, senior uh, Dabas only interact uh, with the, uh, the Lady. Well, off that note, uh, if Abigail will let, let me have an audience with her, get me an audience with him, I would love that. Okay, you can go talk to Abigail. Um, yeah, I'll go talk to her and just ask her if she can get me an audience with uh, whatever his name is. Okay, you want to roll a diplomacy check? Not really, but I will. Night. 
Okay. Um, she asks why you want to talk to the Davis. I just, uh, I'm just appeased in my own mind. I just want to ask uh, a couple questions. What are you uh, interested in learning? Uh, I just want to know more about the X rulers, the power. Um, just, just curiosity. Just killing the killing the cat, essentially. And I feel like, and I couldn't find anything in the libraries about her power. Okay. Um, when you say curiosity is killing the cat, uh, Abel kind of uh, chuckles. And uh, he says to uh, Abigail, there's no harm in letting him ask. And uh, she reluctant reluctantly agrees. You can uh, roll a sense motive. Tom, 42. Nice. Um, you get the distinct impression that uh, she is under the sway of the mask. Huh. Um, I will definitely be pulling the party aside later. But for now, I want to go talk to the Davis. Um, and when I meet with the uh, whoever the leader is, um, I just, or whoever the close, yeah, the head honcho is, I asked them if uh, the Lady Pain is truly dead. Or if he knows what happens when she dissipates into the astral plane. Um, he seems confused by the question. Um, I'll explain what happened when she, when we, um, slew her, essentially. How she, the mask fell off and how I noticed she took an astral form. Or what, that's what she took, right? An astral form? Yes. Um, I'll just explain that. Um, I could be fishing at nothing, but I just am curious if she's truly slain. Okay, um, you can roll a sense motive. Uh, 32. Uh, his confusion seems to be memory oriented. He does not know what you're talking about. The lady is right there. Does the lady of pain ring a bell? Uh, this lady's called the lady of passion, right? Abigail's the lady of passion. Uh, yes. Does the does the Lady of Pain ring any bells? No. Uh, well, I thank him for his time. Um, and I walk away and tell Jackson to gather the party members without Abigail. Tell him to meet at like a pause apartment or something at pause apartment. Okay. So you guys regroup at home? I'm open. For sure, I guess we got to figure out to do if Abigail's becoming a lady of pain or something. Yeah, I'll uh when we all group up, I'll explain what I've what I've gathered that the mask is almost controlling her. Or swaying her opinions. Um and then I'll explain what happened with the Davis. That they have no recollection of the Lady of Pain. Should we be doing something about this? Um, pa, how is your research going? Uh, my research isn't has nothing to do with what uh, you're talking about. I thought you were sort of researching the mask. I could have been mistaken. I am researching the mask, but what you're talking about is all of reality being changed for other people. So uh, I don't think the 
Orange of Mass might be doing that, but I don't think that's anything we're going to be able to deal with. I was just trying to find out what the powers of a whether or not a, a, a magic item can dominate somebody. Okay. Um, you said Abel's old as was as old as the Lady of Pain, right? Or is the Lady of Pain older? The Lady of Pain is significantly older than Abel. Okay. There's something going on with this mask, and I want to figure out the origins of it. The mask you know from your legend lore predates any historical event that you have ever witnessed or know, known or heard of. Um, do we know the maker of the mask? Chalva no, made the mask, and it was made during uh, creation. I'm curious if her essence is still in the mask. Well, I will tell the party to keep their eyes open to Abigail and uh, suggest maybe talking to Abel and letting him know what's going on. Sure. We might want to go to the astral plane just to figure out what actually happened to the Lady of Pain, if we can find a way to find what remains there. Um, yeah. Um, is there, would the city have a way of just easily traversing the astral plane? Like, have a way of helping us? Well, you guys have an astral amulet. Um, there would be several portals to the astral plane, depending upon where you want to go. I mean, more like tra traversing the plane. Because I'll go out there and, like, I'll go travel for a day or two. But it's a matter of moving around. Well, the astral plane is infinite in the way that most planes are um, infinite. And the astral plane encompasses all of those infinite planes. So, basically, you are going to wander around Edmonton looking for something that might be in Australia. Fair. In an area that is twice the size of the universe. Fair. I guess we can open a portal to where we slew her. Uh, you slew her in the city. Okay, Kasha, what were you thinking of doing? Well, so normally with like plane shift and stuff, you don't necessarily go exactly where you want to go, right? Yeah. But, um, she does have the ability to open a gate. And when she gates, I believe she has a chance to gate to exactly where she wants to go in a given plane. So that was Akasha's plan, but if somebody has like a divination spell or similar, that might be the better way to go. Um, Pa? Our magical caster himself? Uh, I don't think scrying works across the planes, does it? You would have to look into specific scrying spells, but uh, generally, low-level spells do not. Well, I don't have anything off the top of my head that will allow me to scry a god on a different plane. Okay. Um, that came to back, brings me back to my next question. Should we talk to... Tell able about what's going on with his daughter anybody have any input on that no I still don't trust able but I mean, he gave her that sword shield to make a will save. Nah. Um, is Abel looking like he's a little bit more trustworthy over the past couple of weeks? Like, he's been following orders. 
Yep, you can roll a sense motive. Uh, <laughs> I'm a left blade reroll. Uh, 28. Uh, he seems to be, uh, doing, uh, what he said he would do. Now, is he following her as the Lady of Passion or as her, his daughter? Um, that's a good question. I don't even know if you'd have a way to determine that. I don't think I would, but it would, but if you. If he's following her as his daughter, then he might want to know what's going on. If he's just following her as the Lady of Passion, then he wouldn't care. At least that's what I, what I would think. Yeah, you can roll another uh, uh, sense motive on him. 27. Yeah, you find it really hard to get a read on him um, because of his just clarity of thought as a uh, divine creature and his overall desire to not be probed. He, uh, he is very icy, particularly towards you. So um, you really don't know what he's thinking or why he's doing it. Why is record, he... I don't want to be probed either. Why, why is he against me, mostly? I'm the only one who's probing him. I guess that makes sense. Um, you said something in the original introduction that he really didn't like, and uh, I forget what it was, but he doesn't like you. Remember when he tried to intimidate you? Oh, at the very start, uh, I asked, I asked him why he, uh, why he, um, was denied entry the first time. I guess he didn't like me pro asking questions. Oh wow! You can keep a gate open for a round level. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, while we're all together in the uh, in the apartment, uh, Silverpaw will ask everybody uh, where we should be going if we ever have to leave Sigil quickly. Honestly, I feel like the Eladrin City is our best bet. If you remember that from a long time ago. It's in the Outlands, right? It's in the Beastland. The Beastland. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. yeah I right. think like, if we have to leave Sigil, we have to leave the Outlands. What makes you think we'll have to leave Sigil quickie, quickly? Quickly. Quickie. I don't think it's for sure. But I think now that Abigail is in power, we should look to find a place to go to if we end up having to leave. Uh, I don't know what's happening with Abigail right now, but if she forgets who we are, anything could happen. Okay. Um, do one of you want to go just go to the Beastlands and talk to the uh, council? Or look at getting a place out there for us, just as a safe house? Or do you want me to? Do one of the portals in Sigil go to the Beastlands, or go to the Ladrin City in particular? Um, there are, I believe, thousands of portals in the city. I would have to do some math to figure out how probable that is. Um, you can get to basically any world you want and most significant locations, um, but just a random racial city on a plane i'd have to f sit down and look at the uh portals and figure out how many there are and their destinations um you could definitely get to the beast lands without any difficulty and you could probably find a spot uh relatively close to uh the Eladrin city and zentil or something it was called I can spend I can spend a week and just go just go figure out away from a certain portal if you guys want me to. You know I'm not 
that good of survival. <laughs> it's not a question of whether or not you can find the portal. It's a, just a question on the DM's perspective is how many portals are there in the city and how likely it is that there's going to be thousands of portals to each plane. Fair enough. I think I am, though, going to, if we have some downtime, go talk to Abel and let him know what's happening or what I've noticed with Abigail. Zen Mill, that's what it's called. That's been so long. Yeah, I had to go find the uh, the original document for the name. I knew it started with a Z. Okay, so you're going to go talk to uh, to Abel. Um, you can roll a diplomacy check. Uh, 32, 35, 34, 34. Okay. Um, he, uh, tells you that the, the nature of the mask is to, uh, rule sigil and to rule sigil, you need to be objective and, uh, well, the sword will help her retain herself. It cannot protect her from the influence of the mask forever. Um, are we in trouble as a party, as me and my comrades? Are we going to be forgotten? And are we going to be getting into some trouble here? Or are we still safe to stick around Sigil? He says, uh, we are in uncharted waters. Um, Nobody really knows what will happen with the mask once it is removed from Chalva. So uh, there's no real way of determining what the outcome is going to be. My hope is that uh, she will retain enough of herself that she can uh, continue to be happy and uh, live her life. But... If she succumbs to the mask, then uh, she will be the mask. All right. Well, thank, thank you for that information. Um, I'll apologize to Abel for probing him when we first met. Didn't mean to offend him. Can we separate her from the mask even just temporarily to try to help her? Or now that she's acquired the mask, is she sort of doomed to this fate? Uh, you have no frame of reference to even make a call on that. The only time you've ever seen the mask separated from, uh, Chalva is when she is discorporated and it returns to the sanctuary or when she was slain and it fell on the ground. I think we just have to wait this one out. I guess so. I mean, I was thinking that if we could get the mask off her, like, Kasha would, could try to train her how to form her own planar ward, which would give her protection from mental control. Um, it would only take a feat from Abigail, but it might be worth it. Uh, or class level, I guess. But, um, if that's not really an option, then I still think we should go with the plan of trying to investigate what's happening out in the astral and make sure, you know, confirm the kill on the Lady of Pain. Yeah, um, that'd be a smart idea. Um, I think maybe getting the help of Abel there might be worth it. If I know you don't trust him, but I don't like fighting the Lady of Pain without the Lady of Passion if we have to fight her. Sure. So I guess I'll uh, go ask Abel for help as well. I'll let him know 
what I my theory is on the Lady of Pain, and if he agrees to help us go search the astral plane or check it at least. John? Uh, yep, I was just going to say, um, why don't you guys write down on your characters, character sheets, your theories and plans and ideas from this point forward, because we don't know when we're going to come back to this. But we are now in uncharted waters, so where you guys go from here, I need to plan for, and I have no idea what you guys are going to do, so I don't have anything prepped beyond the... Uh, uh, this point in the game so um, the two other things that I was planning on doing were part of the not going uh, to the sudden death and continuing with Abigail so um, going down this path I actually didn't think that you guys were that interested in uh, parting ways for us so uh, I didn't really plan anything along this path but uh what you guys want to do from here um just figure it out and let me know and we can go on to that going into the astral plane to look for chalva is uh definitely one task you can do um you have to come up with a way of determining that um dealing with the mask uh is another option depending upon where you guys want to go story-wise uh do you have any other uh tentative plans for the game I got it uh -uh. so Paul where do you want to go from here uh, I think right now Pa's interest would be to try and figure out how to deal with the mask whether that's removing the mask from Abigail and basically just leaving with her so that, you know, uh, Abel takes up the mask or whatever just to get her out of there because I don't think she's going to win. Or if the, the party wants to go and find out what's, what happened to Chalva, we can do that. Although I think that's a wasted effort. Okay. Uh, Flynn, what do you want to do? Um... I do would like would like to figure out what happened with Chalva, but I, the whole party kind of needs to be involved. Otherwise, Flynn really has no. I, neither of us have really have any care of what we do. Okay, uh, um, Odo. Um, I'm kind of with Paul. Chalva is more or less the puppet. The mask is the real problem. Okay, Akasha. Um, pretty much all of the above, but um, Akasha is also going to kind of focus a bit on the city, like continuing to rebuild, particularly the Church of Nuan and the Believers of the Source, or whatever the new version of that faction is after the faction war. Just make sure that, um, in addition to like. Like, it may be that she forgets who we are, but she doesn't want anybody, like any of the other power brokers in the city, to forget who we are and what we did for them. So um, that includes bringing back the, um, I put a note in there, but um, bringing back the Dark Will guy and keeping our promise there, for example. Okay, um, that's definitely something we didn't really touch on, was uh, Dark Will. Make sure you write that down for future reference so we remember to do it um yeah uh did not go the way i was expecting but uh very interesting nonetheless uh i'm quite interested to see where you guys go with this um all of these plans definitely have uh uh merit and uh threads connected to them but like i said i didn't plan for this contingency um i will let you guys know by the rules Whoever takes up the mask um, becomes the Lady of Pain. Um, this was one of the tweaks that I had made to it with the concept of keeping Abigail in the game was that she would have the ability to resist it. But since we decided we were going to go the other way, I was like, okay, well, I'll go with the 
the base rules. Um, I didn't know how you guys were going to re react to being forgotten. From what you can determine, it is only the Davis who have lost their memory of the Lady of Pain. And when you delve into it, they still remember the Lady of Pain. Their memory has just been changed so that the Lady of Passion has always been the Lady of Pain. So to them, there's no difference between the two of them. It's just their genetic makeup is tied to the mask as well. So whoever wears the mask is the Lady of Sigil to them. And uh, we're going to take uh, next Sunday off because it's a double uh, game week for me. And then we will pick up with the Dark Force Rising the following Sunday. Okay. Any questions before I take off? No. 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 Okay. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks, later. Thanks.